All right. In this example, we're going to compute bearings. Now, the scenario that we have is we have a closed tra traverse, as you can see here. Um, we're given this closed traverse. We know the bearing, for example, from point A to B is given to us as 31 north, 31 degrees, 10 minutes east. Um, at B, we have an internal angle of 96 degrees, 18 minutes. Okay. At point C, we have another internal angle of 76 degrees, 44 minutes. And then you can see we have two other points here. And what we're trying to do is for two sides, for this side BC here and this side CD, we want to calculate the bearings, kind of like what we have for side AB. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking at the points of interest. Okay, if I'm going to write a bearing for point BC, I start by kind of looking at this point right here, which is what we have for point B. Okay, and I'm kind of redrawing it, kind of getting more detail to it. Um, it's a lot easier sometimes if on the side you do these individual drawings rather than try to do everything on the original, because as you're going to see, you get a lot of angles and stuff going on where sometimes it can get a little confusing in terms of deciphering what everything is. Okay. And so what I'm doing, first of all, is at point A, you can see I draw in my meridian, my vertical reference, right? So if I was given a, a bearing of north 31, 10, east, I'd say basically that this angle here is the 31, 10. Okay. Then I have point B here. I drew in the internal angle that was given to me as 96, 18. And then I'm going to do a couple other things. First of all, I'm going to draw an extension line here as a hidden line. And I'm going to also draw in another vertical reference or meridian right here. Okay. Now from geometry, we recall that if I have an angle of 3110 here relative to this vertical reference line, this angle here is also 31 degrees. If this angle here is 3110, that means that this angle here is also 3110. And I'm just going to use the notation. You have like a single dash going through that angle. This angle here and this angle here are both the same angles, right? So if you imagine, if this is your vertical angle, as you, as you rotate a line here, the angle that it makes here is also the angle that it makes here. Those are also alternate, I think they're called alternate interior angles. Okay. So that's a good start. Now, for us to have the bearing of BC, remember, bearing starts from either the north or the south, and then you go either, say, 90 degrees to the west or east or 90 degrees to the west, depending on which quadrant you're in. This bearing, looking at the drawing here, this bearing is basically going to be south so many degrees east. Okay. For lack of better term, I'm just going to call this number here, this angle alpha. Okay. So once we can calculate alpha, say alpha was 40 degrees, then we would say, oh, the bearing for BC is south 40 degrees east. Okay. But let's go ahead and go through and calculate what alpha is. So alpha is going to be the difference between the 9618 and this little angle that we have here, which was 3110. Okay. So alpha ends up being, let's see, 96 minus 31 is 65 degrees. And then here we would have eight minutes left after that. Okay. I'm just cheating. So if I have 6518, I'm saying 6508 for this angle, my bearing for BC, I'll write that here as the answer, is going to be south 6508 east. So now we figured out the bearing for this line. We're going to use a similar approach okay, to get the bearing for CD, 
the, our point of interest right now is this point here, C. So you can see, I went through and I have a detail of C. Now, of course, at point C, I have an angle of 7644, an internal angle. We're good there. Okay. The bearing that we just calculated for, for BC, that's this angle coming in right here. Okay. That angle is the 6508 that we just computed. So we needed the angle there from the previous problem for this one. Okay, which can be obviously problematic if you make a mistake on the first one, then if unfortunately the error is going to carry through. Okay. Now, so that's the angle here. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the previous problem. I'm just going to extend this over a little bit so I can draw a few things. Okay. Now, if this angle here is 6508, then that must also be this angle here. Okay. And if this angle here, I'll use a double dash on this one here, this angle here is also the same as this angle here. Because again, you can imagine if you have this line that's rotating through, Right, as much as it rotates going this way, swinging this way, that line's also rotating on the top part going up there. So these two angles are equal. Okay. Now what I like is I would like to get this angle here, which I'm going to call beta. I'm not very original with my names. These are alpha and beta, but we'll keep it simple. Okay. The reason I want that angle is I can see that I'm going to have a bearing of south so many degrees west for C to D. So that so many degrees is going to come from beta. So we need to calculate beta. Okay. Now, looking at my drawing here, it's not a great drawing, but it's clear enough for me to see a couple things. I can see, since I have a straight line going through here, I can see that this is a supplementary, supplementary angle, okay? meaning that if I add the 76 plus the beta plus this, those three angles should be 180 degrees. So if I take 180 and I subtract the 76, 44, and I subtract the 65, 08, I should get beta, right? Beta will be, so these three angles together have to equal 180, so beta is going to be the difference between 180 and those two. And this gives me a beta of 38 degrees, and I'm taking a look at here, 8, okay. So if my beta is 3808, now I have to write that in terms of a bearing. Okay. And because I'm running a little room, I'm just going to write it up here. My bearing for line CD okay, is going to be south 3808, the angle that we just figured out. And it's going west. This is in that quadrant. And there are my two bearings. You can see I just had enough room for that. Again, to kind of recap, we had this closed traverse. We were trying to figure out the bearings for lines B and C. What we do is because we were looking for the bearing of BC, and I know some things going on at point B. I know this angle. I know the bearing going into that. I basically did a detail, right? I did a, like almost like almost like a free body diagram thing. It's not with forces, but just basically a large detail of what's going on at point B. And then just using the information that was given to me, using the fact that I knew the existing bearings and these angles, and I knew the interior angle, and just basically, unfortunately, this isn't the kind of problem where there's just a formula that you can just plug and chug. This is the kind of problem where it's basically like a, a mathematical puzzle, right? A ge geometric puzzle where you're looking at angles and looking at what you're given, and using relationships, the fact that, that you have, for example, the sum of some angles have to be 180 if it's a supplementary type of angle, or complementary if it's 90, and you're using a lot of math tricks with 
you know, alternate it to your angles and that kind of stuff to solve it. But the key to solving these problems is to draw a large detail at each point, clearly showing which angles you're given, and then it could be then it's a little